If you like this video, please go ahead and consider hitting that like button. Subscribe if you have not already, and please, by all means, share this video. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 Map for Suppressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at Dyshoff Obenfreighted. But before that, this video is brought to you by Sherry Downs and Good Old Boy Gamer. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Dyshoff Obenfreighted map. We found over at the farming simulator.com website for the in game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you some of the description. The map Deichhof Abendbreden was inspired by German North Sea Coast and is primarily a single player map, but also brings joy to two or three players in multiplayer. Now, we'll say if you do multiplayer with this map, it is a very small map, so you will want to use small machinery only. At the heart of this map lies the beautiful farm of Deichhof Abendfreude, which has a long history. The farm is renowned for its exceptionally good bread. Other mainstays include dairy farming, chickens, and an old farm at BGA. Can you be successful and continue its story? On this map, you'll find the starting farm, which includes dairy cows and chickens, an on-farm BGA, windmill, and bread production. There's also a sheep barn and a sheep pasture, and a pig barn with silo and barn. There is also a field barn, wind turbine, and all the stalls and farms can be purchased and managed via the farmland, but also do not try to sell the farm buildings because it will end up with a very undesirable state. On this map, you'll find several selling points, including windmill, BGA, bread production, snack bar at the beach, oven freight and cinema, agricultural trade, livestock dealer, dairy, grain mill, a rock crusher, land production, well, it's agricultural production, which includes fries, popcorn, sunflower oil, rape, seed oil, and clothing. On this map, you'll find 18 fields, a range of size from 0.65 to 8.2 hectares in size, five meadows, a range of size from 1.3 to 4.5 hectares, and one forested area. Now, this map does have eight required mods. Those required mods are the MF3000 series, the EU factories, placeable power lines, biogas plant, 150 kilowatt, windmill, VDI old sheep stable, field barrier pack, and Jansen farm. In addition to those required mods, we are going to be using the mods we typically use when we look at maps. They are additional field info, additional game settings, animal food, or review, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. Now, if you happen to load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find that the farms are built out exactly how you see them here in new farmer mode. With the exception, you do not own any machinery, nor do you own the land that the farms are built on. With respect to low end systems, if you happen to have a low end system, I will tell you that you should have extremely good frame rates on this map because I used a system with integrated AMD graphics and I had no issues whatsoever maintaining a nice solid 60 FPS. Let's go ahead and take a look at our PDA. And this is a smaller than standard size map. So if we zoom all the way out, we can imagine that a standard map is gonna be about where my cursor is making the box. So you can see, I would say that this is probably maybe a third of a size of a standard map, maybe somewhere between a third and a quarter. We do have all the standard crops available to us in FS22 available on this map, including if you have the premium expansion enabled, red beets, carrots, and parsnips. Take a look at our lands overview. We start by owning farmland ID5, which is the main starting farm. That can be bought for $397,000 in any alternate game mode. You also have farmland ID4, three, six, and seven. Farmland ID 30 includes two sheep areas. They can be bought for $78,000. And farmland ID 28 includes a pig area that can be bought for $69,824. Go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are. If those farmlands include any field or fields, what is included? Then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? We now compare that to the field calculator screen. This is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. 
And let's go ahead and take a look and see how the US soil map is being applied to these fields. To the north, the fields are predominantly silty clay and a little bit of sandy loam. To the south, though, we do have much more of the desirable soil type with loam and sandy loam. And then right smack dab in the middle, we've got silty clay and sandy loam. Our starting field of two, so a mix of silty clay and sandy loam. Field three, we've got loamy sand and sandy loam there as well. As far as our crop counter goes, we do have the standard FS22 crop counter available to us on this map. And if we take a rundown through our various prices information, well, you will find that for whatever reason, we do not have the ability to sell cotton on this map. You may remember that we do have all the crops available to us on this map, so we could plant and harvest cotton, but we can't sell it. So at most, you're going to have to put down a spinnery in order to process that cotton into fabric. Something else that we cannot sell, what we're going to find further down is going to be honey. But we can sell our eggs, oil, and milk, as well as our silage, hay straw, and grass. But as I mentioned, with respect to other productions, we cannot sell our base game honey, nor can we sell our base game plants, which again is rather interesting on this map. See, planks seem to come up most frequently with respect to things we cannot sell. We do have the ability to buy bulk lime, and we also do have the ability of getting rid of our stones at the debris crusher. As far as additional production on this map, we have popcorn, french fries, bread with cheese and salad. And then if you are gonna play with the farm production pack, you will need to put down something if you wish to wash your root crops. And the same is going to go with respect to the Platinum Expansion. You will need to put down something if you wish to sell any of the Platinum Expansion products. As far as our Premium Expansion products and crops, we can sell those down at the Land Trade Grain Acceptance. And then also, if you have pumps and hoses installed, you will be able to sell your separated manure at the hay shed and your hay and straw pellets at either the biogas plant or the hay shed, respectively. As far as our starting equipment goes, we own everything, but it is slightly used. So we're not going to get top dollar if we go and try to sell everything unless we do go and do some maintenance first. We do have eight cows and nine chickens as far as being on the starting farm. We do have contracts available on this map. And we start out by owning the biogas plant, which is on the farm. The biogas plant is going to accept silage, slurry, manure, straw, hay, potatoes, and sugar beet cut. And it's going to produce energy and digestate. We also have a mill bread facility. That is going to make our bread with cheese and salad. It's going to require lettuce, tomato, milk, flour. And then we're going to get our cheesy sandwich. Or we can manufacture bread have a windmill on the starting farm, which is going to produce flour from wheat, barley, oats, sorghum, corn, sunflower, canola, or soybeans. And then also has the ability of producing sugar from sugar beets or sugar cane. Then we have a large greenhouse also on the farm. We do not have any collectibles available to us on this map. As far as our, as far as our starting fleet goes, we have a pair of Massey Ferguson small tractors and the 3650 and the 3120. We've got the Kloss Dominator 108 SL Maxi Harvester. We also then have the C510 Grain Header for that Kloss Harvester and the Kloss C510 Header Trailer. For the Schaefer 2630 Front Loader, we have a Brantner DD24073-2 trailer and a pair of Welger DK-115 trailers. We have a Torino 3FX cultivator and the Agrisim Comma Plow 3 meter. We have the Nordstein HK-25 NS-3030 seeder and Power Hero combination. We have a ZATS-3200 fertilized spreader. The Breitner TA-12050 power spread plus manure spreader. And the Super Cease 800 slurry tanker. We have a GMD-4411 side mower and the GF8712 Tether. We have a Samez Z2840H wind rower, 
the Faro 4010D forage wagon. We have the Impress 125F Pro round baler and the Vicon VW2850 bale wrapper. We have the Silo King TMR mixer as well as the MKS liquid tanker and the Josquins Aquatran 7300S water trailer. We have the Q5M front loader arms. For our front loader arms, we have the pallet fork and manure fork. And then we wrap it all up with a pair of 650 kilogram front weights. As far as mods and DLCs, well, we have the Massey Ferguson 3000 series that is listed as one of the required mods. And then for the map itself, we have the Kloss Dominator, the header trailer, and the header, which are embedded with the map. As far as our starting farm goes, we have our lane, and then we can see our sheep pasture and our sheep shed down there. We'll get to those here in a moment. We have our sleep trigger located right here. This is going to be our pallet spawn point for our bread mill. Go ahead and come on through over here. We have our interactive icon for the bread mill. We have our wardrobe trigger, oddly enough. And we have our dump point for the bread mill located outside. Around the back, we have our greenhouse. We have our water, we have our pound spawn, we have our interactive icon there. Then we have our cow barn. This is where we're going to get our cows. We have eight at the start, and we can put 80 in here in total. We have our milk trigger. Then we have our straw and food trough here in the middle of the barn. We have our manure heap. Now you can see on the other side of the barn, we do have our slurry point located right here. Looping back here to the farmhouse, we have some pallet storage. A total of 300 pallets or bales stored here. And we start out with two pallets of seed, two pallets of lime, two pallets of solid fertilizer, and one pallet of wheat. So we have our dump point here. more of our sheds then we have another pallet and bale storage this one holds 300 pallets or bales and we have three round bales of hay and three round bales of straw stored here at the start we do have a pull through silage bunker here at the main farm And we have our biogas plant. This is going to be our fill point for our digestate. We have our interactive icon. We have our dump point for our manure. And then we have our digester. We also start out with three silage bales that are located over here by the tree line. Up beside the silage or the silage bunker, we have our farm silo. We have a dump and fill pipes. We have another storage shed located right here. And then we have our windmill. And our windmill is going to produce the flour and the sugar. So we have our pallet spawn point. We have our interactive icon here. And then we have our dump station along the side. We have our chickens, so we can do 360 total chickens, of which we start out with eight chickens and a rooster. We have our egg point. We have our food trough for our chickens. We have our harvester parked inside of here. 
And now we're back around to where we started. Now, like I mentioned earlier, you can attempt to sell the buildings here on the farm. And to some degree, they do go away. But to other degrees, they don't. So do not try to sell any of this stuff. Use the farm exactly how you see it here. Make our way down here to our sheep area. Once you end the land, you will see the triggers pop up. We're going to be able to put a total of 40 sheep in the sheep barn. We have our food trough there. And we have multiple feed triggers, which is kind of kind of interesting. We have our wool spawn point. And then we have our sheep pasture over here. So we have our food, we have our water, we have our sheep drop off. We have eight sheep that start here in the pasture once we own it. And we can get a total of 100 sheep overall. Now what I don't really see identified here is gonna be our wool point for the sheep pasture. Maybe it's going to be right here. That's likely a good bet. And let's make our way around over to the main road to get to the pig area. And again, you do need to buy this in order to make use of it. We have another farm silo dump and fill point. Another nice storage shed. We have our food trough for our pigs. We have our pig pickup point. 150 pigs available inside of here. We have our slurry point for our pigs. And that is pretty much going to be the starting farm and the two additional animal areas that you can get here on this particular map pig area, our two sheep areas, and then the starting farm with the chickens, the cows, the bread production, greenhouse, and the flour mill. Now let's come back up here and take a look at our PDA, just to give you a little frame of reference as to where we've been. We have the starting farm here, the sheep, the pigs. We do have a few things up here, including a snack bar by the beach. Our hay shed, our animal dealer, we have our fertilizer line buying station, we have agricultural production, grain mill, our dairy, then we have several cell points down here to the south. Now this is a small map, so it's not going to take very long to fly or drive to these other areas. And we have our animal dealer our bale cell point. And then down the road, we're gonna have our cell point here by the beach. Now with respect to our scoring on this map, we're gonna be giving the map a full point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such. This is that barn that was mentioned in the description, kind of just being here off all by itself. With respect to the ability to sell all of our base game crops, animal items, and production points, we're going to be in the map three quarters of a point there because we are missing the ability to sell cotton, honey, and planks. Here we have the buildable mode or the buildable site located right here. That is going to be farmland ID 14 and can be bought for $28,000. We have our lime production, our lime seed fertilizer, buy a point there. 
And here you can see basically corn for popcorn, potatoes for french fries, sunflower for sunflower oil, canola for canola oil, and cotton for fabric. So this is going to be agricultural products. And we can buy that for $60,000. Let's go ahead and do that so you can see we have then our popcorn, our french fries, sunflower oil, canola oil, and our clothing. Our pallet spawn point there. Over here we have our other flour mill. Then our interactive icon, out spawn point, and our dump point. Then we have our dairy, out point, interactive icon, and dump point. With respect to the farms being customizable, we're giving the map a half a point there because of the fact that the buildings really can't be sold at the farms without having a whole lot of deco elements remain. So overall, I would say definitely do not try to sell the buildings at the farms, just as a general. Here we have our sell point for grain. And the sell point for our various products. See how we get down here. Loop around, go over the bridge. And we have our vehicle dealer. So we have our dealer maintenance trigger right here with our trigger markers. Then we have our dealer trigger over here at the door. Let's go ahead and pick up our Mahindra. A decent sized area for our vehicles to spawn, given the fact that we have such small fields here. Not too terrible bad getting in and out of the dealership either. We have our stone crusher also here at our dealer point. And then around the back, we have the final cell point, which is here at the movies, the cinema. Oh, look, we have a faithful companion. That's one movie. This is pretty neat. Ah, uh, Teamwork Among Friends is another movie. Do we have a concession? Oh, we do. Look, this is our ticket booth. So here we have which movies do we want to buy? Tickets to. Wow, well, that's pretty cool. And then our concessions, popcorn, French fries, a really neat, really neat add on to the map. So guys, that is it with respect to trigger and interactive areas being clearly marked. We're going to go ahead and give the map a full point there. Buildings where appropriately are using the new texturing technique. Most of the buildings over here at the various farms areas are not necessarily using the new texturing technique. So we are gonna take and take a half a point off there. So that's gonna give this map a score of 3.75 out of five. I think this is a really cool map and someone looking to maybe play farm sim, but doesn't have a whole lot of time to dedicate to doing work on big fields or is maybe just looking to play on a smaller map with smaller machinery. I think this map is going to be ideal for you. Let's go ahead and check our landscaping screen here with respect to our ground textures. We do have a fair bit of added ground textures added here on the map. Fairly standard plants and trees. And since we do have required mods, we will have some custom items showing up here in all of the various other areas. I'd love to know what you all think down in the comments below with respect to this particular map. And until next time, happy farming.